You remember when your mom and dad talked about the importance of having term life insurance? I mean, it felt really good knowing the family would have money after something happened. How do you think they felt? They worked their entire life without truly getting the benefit of having term life insurance? MyTermLifeGuy.com MyTermLifeGuy.com You don't have to die to receive the benefits. A $1 million policy for a healthy male, non-smoker, below $35 a month. MyTermLifeGuy.com Hey, it's Arrow, and this is Pod Crashing, Episode 57, My Conversation with Bobby Brown. When I first came up with a plan to lay out a series of episodes dedicated to podcasting, I truly didn't have any mission other than to find my own focus. I figured if I wrote about this new age of broadcasting, I'd learn something from the enormous amount of content that's available to us every day. While collecting notebooks of pin scratches and listening to every professional share their points of direction, the weekly goal was to be a movie-style critic for podcasting. Yeah, well, that didn't happen. I don't have what it takes to form an opinion about other people's art. Yeah, it is art to me. It's a blizzard white canvas hung on digital walls and millions of people from around the world stop in to check out your gallery. That's it. I, I host episodes about what it's like to manage my own verbal picture collection. In doing so, I began to share incredible conversations with other well-known podcasters, but I would never post them as part of Pod Crashing, the fear of running out of a good idea. I mean, you can't develop a podcast with only half of the plan in action. So I waited and waited until one day I finally took note of the pretty long list of podcasters that have been collected, and the list keeps getting longer. This week, my conversation is with Bobby Brown. Bobby Brown is one of the most renowned names in beauty. But who is the real Bobby Brown, and what can we learn from her? The legendary makeup artist walked away from the billion-dollar beauty brand she founded and hasn't stopped creating since. She's a New York Times best-selling author, a certified health coach, and a serial entrepreneur. But her insatiable curiosity doesn't stop there. In the podcast Beyond the Beauty, Bobby Brown enlists top-notch experts across the fields of makeup, wellness, fashion, and entrepreneurship, along with her closest friends and family, all in search of the real meaning of beauty. We are Unplugged and Totally Uncut with Bobby Brown. I'm great. How are you? Fantastic. Congratulations on bringing the mind, body, and soul forward with your podcast, Beyond the Beauty. This is this is such a great step in the right direction when it comes to this new age of broadcasting. Oh, I'm, I'm really excited to be part of it. It's very fascinating for sure. To step in that direction, because it's still so new to a lot of people, what do you have to do to physically prepare yourself for something like this? Because really what you're sharing is the beauty from your heart on this podcast. Well, I got to be honest, I don't do a lot before I step into the studio. I know I have my team and my amazing producer, Allie, who's, if she's listening, she's probably ready to kill me, but they do a lot of work and they, they organize it, they plan it, they get me a tea and they do all their prep work. They hand me a sheet and I usually just start talking and then I during the interview I'll kind of look at the sheet and make sure I didn't forget anything and usually I'm pretty good is, is it kind of weird to go into like a theater of the mind that radio and podcasting brings compared to where you've been with cameras and all that stuff you know what it's awesome I mean I've been very lucky in my career I've been a regular on Elvis Duran and I've also been a regular on the Today Show it is way less stressful being on Elvis Duran than it ever is on the Today Show because Today Show you have to worry about everything how you look and your hair and your outfit and the model and and you know you roll into Elvis and even whatever has been prepared you never get to because he goes on his own way do, do you ever sit across from Elvis and go Elvis we, you need to trim on the hair and we need to do something with your makeup here man come on buddy well you know we're, we're we become really really close friends and i even once made a bronzer which the x company i think has discontinued called elvis duran because he had a very bad bronzer mishap one so i i made him the right color see that was one of the things when i was in television that i that i couldn't stand because i felt like i didn't get to wear the right makeup and it always made me uncomfortable and and you you can't report on a news channel if you're not if you don't feel like that you should be feeling great Oh, there's no question. There is no question. And I'm I'm sometimes very distracted when I'm watching TV, and it's HDTV, which, by the way, was designed by some man for football games, okay, not thinking that, oh, there's some people that get to a certain age and still want to be on TV. But it's distracting. You could see a lot of the actresses and the TV presenters um, things that they've shot in their face, plus you could see their makeup not sitting nice. So 
you got to be a really good makeup artist to do makeup on HGTV. The podcast we're talking about is Beyond the Beauty. What Do we need a new definition for beauty in 2020? Because it seems like that we're, we're still looking like we did 10 years ago. What what are the big changes? Well, yes, we do need a new definition. And my, my, my definition that I want people to really take away is beauty is so individual and beauty is not actually what you look like it's how you feel and how you feel you look if you look in the mirror and you are someone that just doesn't feel good in your skin and you're tired and you're just putting bad food in and you look in the mirror and you're like i look terrible it's it's you're not going to look good but if you're someone that says okay this is me I'm, I'm not Gigi Hadid. I'm not, you know, this one or that one. Let me be myself. And then, you know what? It's so much easier to feel good and to be really beautiful. That's so cool that you bring that up because yesterday I was blessed with the opportunity to spend some time with Paul McCartney's mother. And, and she's 90 years old. And she says, I'm just getting started. And, and it's just amazing that that, that that number, that age seems to really age people out. And people need to forget about that number, don't they? That is so amazing. And yes, by the way, I mean, I'm 62 and I'm, you know, creating new businesses. I don't feel my age. I don't think about it. I make sure I only look in really good mirrors and I put good food in my body. I exercise and on occasion I will do a massage and, you know, kind of recharge myself. But yes, you want to feel great in your 90s. That's amazing. You talk about eating right. That's actually a subject that you cover on Beyond the Beauty. It is. I Since I left the Bobby Brown Cosmetics brand, I went back to school and got my degree as a health coach. I was able to promote my ninth book called Beauty from the Inside Out, and that allowed me also to create a wellness brand on top of everything else. But my, my whole thing is just what else can I do? How can I be better? And you constantly have to try new things and see what works. You know, we've become this generation of binge eating. How do we break a habit like this? Well, well the most important thing, and it's really hard to do, is breathing. It's just so hard. You've got to remind yourself, and if you could just even take one breath, like you see, okay, that feels good. So if you have to just remind yourself and get in the habit of, even when you're in like an intense business situation or talking to your mother, like you need to breathe and you need to drink water. Those are things that you could do any time. One of the things that I've taken up in the past six to ten months is is yoga nidra, which is that one thing that you do at the end of class for nidra or for for yoga. But what happens is is that the studies of it go back two thousand years, and it's actually an unlocking of of the thought process. Is yoga a part of of everything that you talk about as well? It is. It is. I only do yoga once a week. I have to be honest. I have someone that comes to my house once a week and does yoga with my husband, myself, and whoever is our house guest from a kid to, you know, foreign exchange student. But it's it such makes a difference. You know, I would like to do it more than once and because it really gets the junk out of your body. It helps you breathe. You can't hold these poses and get stronger unless you are breathing. So it is good for you. Well, you're always locked on forward motion. So what about emotion as well when you're talking about beyond the beauty? So the difference between forward motion and emotion. Well, you know, I look at us like we're, you know, a, a Ferrari. You know, some some of us are Volkswagen, some of us are Ferraris. But you have to put really good things in your body to run. And you also have to know when your tank is empty. And when your tank is empty, you've got to do something, meaning you have to recharge. You've got to fuel yourself, whether it's a vacation, whether it's a mini staycation, whether you just lock. Sometimes I just go up to my bedroom and close the door because I just need a few minutes of alone time. I'm never alone between my work and my family. And I'm like, I got to spend a little more time with myself. We, we both know that we live in kind of a crazy world and, you know, we, we're trying to trust everything when it comes to the economics of the planet. But you really put a lot of focus on entrepreneurship. And that right there is a great confidence builder. It is. And for me, being an entrepreneur, meaning it just means that I get to I try stuff like I try stuff. I'm like, oh, that sounds really cool. Or no, nah, I'm not interested in that. Like I people always say to me, why are you doing that? Why are you doing that? Why are you doing that? I'm like, because I want to. Because I feel like it. <laughs> That's being an entrepreneur. My husband's like, why are you going to speak on that panel? Because I want to. You know, it's like, because I, I feel like it. And if I don't feel like it, I'm getting better with saying I can't. Is it giving yourself permission to say yes? Um, I don't need permission to say yes. I was kind of always was like the good girl. Someone would ask me and I would say, oh, I should. 
And now I realize I can't say yes to all those things. And I'm being a little, uh, not a little, I'm being a lot pickier, but, you know, it comes at the same time with a lot more things that are coming at me and cool opportunities. It's like, sure, I'd love to do that. Why not? So does it start with ma- making a list of 10 things that you enjoy in life? And then once you look at that list, then you say, okay, I want to go try this today. Well, you're making me laugh because I need to make a list about making lists because I have so much stuff in my head. I actually bought this amazing book that my son says has changed his life. I've had it for a month. I carry it with me. I finally took it out of my bag. I've even brought it into an infrared sauna because I thought I could work on it, and I haven't touched it yet. I am, I am like, I am the in my head to do list person, and I know that's something. I keep saying, well, when I get through this launch, I'll do it. When I, you know, when I get back to London, I'll do it. So I'm, I'm still striving to be a better version of myself. The podcast we're talking about is Beyond the Beauty. Curiosity is something that you like to talk about. Do you believe that it gives us strength? I do. I think it's okay to ask questions, and it's okay to say, I don't know what you're talking about, or could you explain it to me? <clears throat> you know, I, I was watching... Um, uh, Shark Tank last night, yep. and I've been asked by a few people, you know, would you want to go on that show? And I always say no. I'd be too afraid, even though a few of my friends have. But man, come on. The visibility would be mind-blowing. And speaking of that, makeup mistakes that we do in the wintertime versus the hot summer sun. What, what can we do to continue looking better when everything looks so dry around us? Well, certainly make sure you put an oil on your face oh. at night when you're really dry. And by the way, you don't need a fancy oil. Just go to the health food store. And my favorite oil that I've been using for about a year is called apricot kernel oil. It'll set you back about $7. And I put it on my face. I put it on my body. I also use uh, coconut oil to, you know, take makeup off. It gives a nice cushion. That helps a lot because what happens is in the wintertime, in the fall, we're, we're dehydrated. We're dry from the elements. You've got to keep moisture. You look better and you feel better. Is, is that part of the clean makeup products that you talk about? They're, they're definitely clean. They're literally one ingredient. They come from the earth and it's one ingredient. Coconut oil, you know, which comes from coconuts, and apricot kernel oil. Who knew that there was oil in apricot kernels? I don't even know what who is like sm- like stepping on these apricot kernels, but they it does it's really nice on your skin. So, how can a person break away from the the traditional? Hey, I'm going to walk into a drugstore and whatever's cheap, I'm going to use that as my makeup. Well, for you know, there are things you could use in drugstores that are not expensive that are actually great, and my makeup kit has plenty of them. And, you know, whether it's like a brown pencil, a black mascara, you, you don't need the most expensive out there. You can get away with some, you know, with some of those if you know what to look for. So the thing with makeup in drugstores, a lot more drugstores are allowing people to try things. Because how do you buy a foundation or anything unless you see the color? So, you know, CVS has done a great job and some other chains to, you know, make the customer experience better. Interesting that you say that because CVS is also one of those stores that doesn't have the big, bright, fluorescent lights above the makeup counter. So you're actually getting, you know, a better look at what's going on. Yes, and honestly, I just went in recently, and I was very, very impressed by a lot of the new brands they're bringing in, a lot more, you know, hip indie brands, some clean brands, so... Good job, CBS. Speaking of good jobs, Harley and Lauren, when it comes to health, I mean, what's it like to sit down with those two and, and to sit there and put a plan together that you know will affect people on the other side of that speaker? Well, you know, they're, they're my gurus I go to and, you know, my struggles, which are the same as most people. So, I mean, look, I am someone that loves a good cocktail. You know, Harley thinks I should just give it up. Lauren says, hell no, let's figure out how to do it and fit it into your life. So it's good to bring different things, you know, different people's opinion in on. And by the way, I'm having a damp January, which Lauren kind of coined, which means, okay, I'm not going to drink as much as I did in November and December. <laughs> I'm going to have a cocktail Friday and Saturday and try to have one. And you know what? I feel much better. So I hope maybe next November I'll have a damp November. We'll see. Don't you think, though, that, I mean, people are just trying to, you know, they'll they'll do a Red Bull or a Monster Drink to get up, but we need that that area of our life to get down. And sometimes those cocktails are the answer. Or is there another suggestion? Well, guess what? They are the answer, but there are other things. First of all, 
if you're you know have the time and ability to be able to take a yoga class at six o'clock and not you know at night will kind of set you I'm not one of those people that do that but I find when I am on the habit of every night to relax I'm, I need it when I am off the habit I don't need it as much that's that's happened this month my husband has a total dry January which I don't you know which means I usually need to drink twice but <laughs> as much as him but that's a whole not, that's a whole other subject but there you know there's CBD on the market there are other things that help you calm down magnesium baths taking magnesium helps you chill um, I actually have a product that is CBD based called chill gummies who doesn't want to chew a couple of gummies with as creative as you are and creative people have their own interesting way and walk do you do you journal every day do you do you do a defrag journal or anything like that just to kind of keep your head straight I don't wow. you know for some reason I'm so lucky that at nighttime when it's nighttime I'm really tired and I go to sleep I, you know I, I have trouble staying up to 11 o'clock I rarely am able to you know finish uh, 11, 11 o'clock news so I don't know. I just I got lucky with with that part of my life because a lot of people have issues. But I do um, accomplish a lot during the day, and I don't write things down. As I said, I they're in my head, but I need to do a better job of organizing my thoughts. And I and I will say I have a an assistant and a second assistant, so I could just kind of say, "Can you do this? I need this. I need this from the vet. I need this." And and it's helpful. That's one of the good things about success. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of those assistants, when when it comes to this is kind of a podcaster's question for our listeners. In the way that when the podcast is over, who is the first person you look at? Because you you're you're sucking in your first breath of air, where you're no longer connected to that listener on the other side. Well, I'd probably look at my uh, my text messages and make sure no one's looking for me. That's probably the first thing I do, and then I stop. And then and I usually walk out and say to my producer. Did that suck? <laughs> How was it? You know, and they're like, well, stop saying, you know, so much, you know, you know, stop <laughs> saying, you know, you know. So. How do you like the way that listeners are reacting, though? It, it's almost like you're, you're going to every corner of the world right now with, with a podcast and, and you, you have to react to them or you, you know, respond to them in some positive way. Well, it's really crazy, but, you know, but, but beside the podcast, my Instagram which, you know, has about 420-something thousand followers. And my, you know, other, my Twitter, my LinkedIn, it's like, you know, there's a lot of information out there. Like, I literally need to just say, stop. You know, just stop. Like, the, your brain, you know, feels like it's about to blow up. You know, I connect with people. I talk to them. I meet people. And I act on things. So, I had some time in the evening, it's like done. I look at Instagram, but I don't talk to anyone. You've always been a people person. Where, do, where does that come from? Is it, is it a family tradition or is it something that just one day you woke up and you said, you know, I, I really want to help people? Well, I've always been, you know, someone that cares about people. I guess coming from, you know, my grandparents and my parents, they're just really good normal Chicago stock people that, you know, my Papa Sam came from Russia, had no money, somehow figured out how to, you know, have a family, have a business. He had, he was the king of these car dealerships in Chicago. And I watched him, you know, I watched my dad build his law practice. And now I watch my dad, who's 84 years old, who is a children's book author, who's written books, goes into schools, travels the globe. He's written a screenplay. And, you know, I guess I come from a good stock of people. Well, and you come from the greatest city on the planet, which is Chicago. I mean, they, they, look at what's happened from that city, period. So many musicians, so many actors, so many great people. Yes, and I think the best food. Yes. I, I'm, honestly, I think the best food. <laughs> yeah, Italian sandwiches, Italian beef, and, and pies. They don't call them pizzas up there. They're pies. <laughs> exactly. And you know what? Not one Chicago radio station bit on interviewing me. You guys, I'm a local. <laughs> So where do you grow from here now? Because podcasting is that one thing where, you, you know, yes, this one is focused in on the mind, body, and soul. But most pos podcasters grow to other shows as well. Are you thinking about, you know, having a spinoff show or to start something else? 
It's been day one, so no, I'm not thinking of, you know, having a spinoff show, though I am, you know, interested in producing some other people's shows because, you know, there's people that I think are super interesting that should have their own podcast, but one, one thing at a time, and, you know, I just launched this, but you know what, like any business, you have something and you have to spend time and energy to grow it. And which means awareness and, you know, comments. I mean, so far, I've got five-star comments, but there's only been two of them. I don't know the people. I checked. So I'm sure, you know, everyone's got opinions. So some, I, I, I do take opinions seriously, but with a grain of salt. And I always delete nasty comments. I was recently with Steve Olsher, who's the creator of Podcast Magazine, and he, and he talked about that very subject about how, how do you keep growing your organic podcast in the way of, you know, it, the people are always going to be, they're, they're going to be trolls, but you've got to be able to still keep reaching forward without saying, I, I can't do it today, man. I, I can't handle the negative. All right. Well, you know, I'm, I'm pretty lucky that most of the comments are, are positive. I mean, I've, I've lived a clean, good life. I haven't, you know, done too many things that, you know, at least in public, that, that you know, are, are controversial. And I just launched this very big master class, which has this giant audience. And it's a, it's a digital makeup show. And I was really worried about getting bad comments. And, you know, there was one really funny bad comment comment that said I once threw a tuna fish sandwich at an assistant because I didn't eat I, I didn't like the mayonnaise and I was like first of all I never ate sandwiches at work but that was a, that was the nastiest comment people were like it's so great to see light natural makeup I, I was worried when when you do as much as you do now in in the media such you know doing the podcasting you're doing the master classes and things like that do you see yourself as a broadcaster or do you see yourself as a journalist um I don't see myself is either of those, so I could easily, you know, add commas to what I do. I see myself as a, a serial entrepreneur, and yes, I am, I guess I'm a journalist, it, which is so funny. I would never call myself that, but I ask a lot of questions. I'm also, I've been in media my whole life, whether, you know, being a regular on Elvis or being on the Today Show. I, you know, I was on Oprah probably 10, 12 times, so I've been in the media my whole life, but... I am lucky that I also get to teach entrepreneurship. I get to teach health and wellness. And probably the only thing I can't teach is how to be still. <laughs> I am no meditation teacher. <laughs> Biopics are huge right now. Who, who plays you in the, in the biopic? Well, it would have to be Demi Moore because we kind of, she's like, uh, people always say to me, you kind of look like Demi Moore. So. <laughs> well, congratulations on Beyond the Beauty. Please, please come back to the show anytime in the future. Oh, thanks. I would love to. Really nice talking to you. You'd be brilliant today, okay? Oh, you too. Thank you.